You're listening to the Higher Ideas Podcast, where ideas grow. Connect on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, or higherideas.net. Now here's your host, I. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I'm holding a little artifact in my hand. It's a memento that I collected myself on the only trip I ever took across the world. It's a humble piece of coral. I collected it myself on a beautiful white sand beach in a gorgeous tropical setting. It was actually the only time in my life that I've been close and touched the ocean. It was a great time. But here in my hand is this piece of coral. Why am I talking about it? Well, I see lessons everywhere in nature, and I'm holding one right now. See, looking at this bony, white, two-inch long, perforated and slightly branched little piece of stony material, you would be forgiven to think that this was just a snapped-off branch of some sort of undersea plant. And a lot of people have that image of coral. And although it does seem to exist as one organism, the details are a little more interesting. See, coral is not a great, expansive creature. What it is, is a collection of tiny individual creatures. And these big, spanning branches and shapes that we see in coral reefs are actually built from the skeletons of older generations of this creature. So one little coral creature lives and dies, and it leaves behind its limestone skeleton, a tiny little piece of skeleton connected to a rock. And another living coral comes around and grabs onto the skeleton, and it lives and dies and leaves behind its skeleton. And this continues and continues until eventually giant structures are formed, layer upon layer, of skeletons of lived and died coral creatures. Now obviously this correlates, no pun intended, directly to our cities and our societies. We build up in exactly the same way. The patterns of nature occur everywhere, even in our modern behaviors. And just like a branch of coral, our cities build up over generations. From small, humble beginnings, layer upon layer is added until we get these big, concrete, sprawling cities. And we little coral creatures, we little people, live on these structures, live and die on these structures. And our energy is used and our lives are spent making that city grow and that society. We are just like coral. We are actually remarkably like coral. But that's not my point today. There is a structure that is much more important than cities and societies. And it's much grander and greater and more mighty than even those mighty accomplishments. But it's invisible. What I'm talking about is your chain of ancestry. Not only your chain of grandfathers and great-grandfathers, not even your chain of human ancestry. I'm talking about your chain of living ancestry, all the way back to the first cell. All of us listening to this right now, all of you, are obviously alive. And you're obviously existing to hear this. And I just want you to stop for a moment and realize what an amazingly, mind-blowingly long expanse of lives and deaths have happened just so you can be here today. Can you imagine how many generations of lives have come before you, directly connected to you? Your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your great-great-grandparents, all the way back to cavemen, all the way back to monkeys, all the way back to lizards, to fish, to single-celled organisms. That unimaginably huge and eons-old structure has been building layer upon layer for all this time, just so you today would have a structure to stand on. Your bones, your flesh, your mind. Every single one of us that's alive today has behind them un 
imaginable amounts of effort, of strife and struggle, of survival, of hunting, seeking shelter, of taking risks, weighing options, making all the right decisions, evading predators, escaping death, and eventually succumbing to death but not before reproducing. You have got an amazing saga behind you. An unimaginably amazing saga. Every single one of us. And to me that is amazing to think about. And though many people would feel small thinking about this, realize that it is directly connected to you, like, a, like an individual coral life form is connected to this mighty branch. You are mighty. You are formidable. You are unimaginably ancient. But here's the thing. Are you living up to all that effort? Are you doing justice to all that struggle and survival? All the blood, sweat, and tears that have led to you? Looking around society today, I see so many people just trying to eke out a living, just trying to slide by unnoticed. As I look around me in this society, I see so much untapped potential. So many people just trying to live a mundane existence, just get by so they can retire one day, be comfortable, and die. And to me, that is a tremendous shame. And it must be a tremendous disappointment if our massive chain of ancestry could look back and see what we've become. We live today in undisputable comforts compared to the conditions from which we came from. And what are we doing with it? What are you doing with it? Now, I'm not saying there's something wrong with just trying to have a comfortable life. But I'm addressing the people who have something inside them that they aren't releasing. Some great potential, some great gift or talent, or some great contribution, some great message, some gift to share with this world, who keep it inside. When you do that, you are spitting in the face of all those behind you who paved the way so you can exist. Realize that you may be the last in your line. Even if you've had kids, those kids might die. All you know is that you are currently alive. Your entire family may be wiped out in some freak accident. You may be the last in your line, someday, if not currently. And in my view, every one of us owes it to our massive collective chain of ancestries to let out everything we can that is inside us that can help or make this world better or be of use or just shine, just bloom. So many of us exist as seeds, unfertilized seeds of potential, of great potential. And so many of us just let it go, let it go unwatered, let it go unsprouted. I'm still working on growing into my own potential. What are you doing? Are you doing anything? Is there something inside you that you're holding on to? Is there a great adventure you can have? Is there a great endeavor you can undertake? What greatness is inside you that sprouts from this massive chain of kings behind you that you aren't letting out? Let it out. Let it bloom. You owe it to all of those lives, all of the skeletons on which you stand. Be aware of this. Be aware of how massive a pile of skeletons you are standing on. And they did it all for you. Now, of course, they never knew that you'd be alive. Even your parents didn't know who you'd be when you came to life, but they still created you. And any parent worth their salt I've seen many times over bend over backwards and go through all sorts of strife and struggle of their own just so their kid might have something to offer, just so their kid might bloom harder than they have, just so their kid might become something more and might live better. And living better isn't only about living more comfortably. Living better is about living harder, living brighter, louder. So think about that. Think about what you're not doing that you could be doing. And then think about what has been done for you to be here, all the way back to the first cell. And think about 
how little effort, in comparison to that, it would take from you to just make it happen. So my message to all of you today is bloom. Bloom hard. Bloom as if you are the last bud on your branch. Just bloom and grow and shine, damn it. Shine on, you crazy diamonds. And that's my message for today, brought to you by a humble piece of coral. Until next time, keep thinking.